don't have a hundred dollar shoes and a 10 cent squat. Do not invest loads of money in the equipment. Do not invest loads of money in, in the fancy bits and bobs. Have all the gear, but no idea. The equipment's not gonna make you a better runner. The equipment's not gonna suddenly make you stronger, make you faster, make you go longer. I figured this unicorn headpiece paired well with my Selena Gomez t-shirt. I don't know, I'm not very fashionable, so I probably am just chatty nonsense. What we're doing now is we're gonna speak about somebody who I haven't actually spoke about since, I wanna say last year, or maybe the year before. And that's Kelty O'Connor. Kelty, at the moment, is going on a running journey. She did a lot of running previously. I've, I was up to date with her running every day, sort of bits and bobs, but now we're looking at a full week running routine and weights workout, a beginner's guide to running. And I'm curious, because again, I'm trying to we kind of vary my content so it's not purely about the realm of like hypertrophy and we're kind of appealing to different goals and different preferences so that's what we'll do today before we do so obviously you know the usual bits and bobs if at any point throughout this entire video you decide you like the video then please let me know you like the video by liking the video and maybe even by tickling the button which could be red or white down below to subscribe to the channel and maybe even clicking the bell next to it so you get notified when I upload every week twice a week you gotta start slow you gotta build and near the end of your run is when you can blast the beat that helps me keep my pace and also not burn out before I even have a chance of getting a runner's high. Sometimes slow and steady really does win the race because ultimately it's not just in the realm of running but in the realm of like how many days a week you're training whatever it may be is starting off with less or starting off slower it's easier to build up pace and to add things to your routine than it is to take away and what I mean by that if you're running slowly and you feel like you could run faster that's quite motivating if you're training twice a week and you feel like you could do three times a week that's quite motivating if you start with three times and reduce it to two although there's absolutely nothing wrong with that and you can certainly do that i encourage you to do so if that aligns with your schedule and your goals better sometimes that can fe feel a bit demotivating same with running if you start fast and feel like you're tiring and you need to slow down that that again could feel a bit demotivating so sometimes it is best just to start a bit slower and build up accordingly the unfortunate thing is you do have to buy a pair of running shoes my beginners you don't need to buy the fancy of running shoes those nike alphas you see all the marathon runners you don't need you just need a pair that will hold up to your runs good shoes and good equipment is going to be vital vital to an extent when it's to support you and essentially to get you where you need to be. But ultimately, there's a saying in powerlifting is, I can't remember it exactly, but something along the lines of, don't have $100 shoes and a 10 cent squat. Do not invest loads of money in the equipment. Do not invest loads of money in the fancy bits and bobs, have all the gear but no idea. The equipment's not gonna make you a better runner. The equipment's not gonna suddenly make you stronger, make you faster, make you go longer, whatever it may be. That's really gonna come down to the fundamentals of your technique, your capabilities, and time and consistency in the game. A little table of contents of what I will be doing is I'll be doing three runs a week, three resistance training, one cross training, and five mobility sessions. It does seem a little bit excessive, especially considering this is titled a beginner's guide to running. Three weight training sessions a week and three runs a week with a cross training session. Mobility, I think you can do every day, fully back that. I think ultimately Natasha did this quite well in her hybrid video where she spoke about maybe doing three weight sessions a week and two runs a week, or three runs a week and two weight sessions a week. In my opinion, that's, that's probably my preferred split here. I think although you can do three, three, and one if you so wish, it really depends on what you're trying to achieve, what you're running for, your experience, Experience levels, but again, considering this is beginner's guide to running, I would probably favor maybe doing less because sometimes le less is more. Here's five basic things we should all keep in mind. One, you want to be slightly lean forward. Two, pay attention to where your foot lands. For my beginners, just realize there's a lot of debate in the running community, and this is one. Do you land on your toe, your midsole, or your heel? I think ultimately it is very key with these running tips to take them like a, with a grain of salt. You will never find somebody or a collection of people who all agree on the same thing. So in the running community, there is going to be someone who disagrees with, with whatever you do. It seems with training, powerlifting, bodybuilding, whatever you do, someone is going to disagree. You're never going to please everybody. It's usually a good idea to see what the literature says, see what the sometimes the majority say, and also find out what actually just works best for you. I think Kelty's tips here are probably a good starting point. But again, you don't need to follow them to a T if you don't want to. You can change them if it better aligns with you and your body. Uh, a side note here, just in general, dead bugs, fantastic movement. Big, big fan, regardless of whether you're running, powerlifting, bodybuilding, whatever it may be be big fan of the old dead bug movement here all my runners reminder we have to go slow i think that was the biggest thing i realized i have this vision of running two minutes in like 
acid builds in your throat. And like 10 minutes and you're absolutely dead. Yeah, speed will come with time. And then that you need to prioritize the technique and building up your work capacity before you then worry about power output and speed. Just like strength, when you go to the gym, when you're squatting, you've got to learn how to squat effectively, build up your work capacity, and then you can worry about piling on the weight gradually over time. Again, build the stable foundation and then add to it over, over time. Because if you try and rush things too soon, you're gonna have to go back to the drawing board and start again and rebuild. And no one wants to do that. It, it, it could be an ineffective use of time. Down below in the description and maybe even the comment section too, you will see links to many things. TFNL coaching, where you can work with either myself, Ryder or Beth on a one-to-one -one coaching basis to help you achieve your goals. That might be group coaching, which costs less than your Netflix subscription, but then you can follow a program I create for the community. You can either follow it along with people or on your own, and you can talk to me and input your weights and whatever you're doing there for both home and gym workouts. And then again, you can communicate with me on that platform being Train Heroic. And on top of that, if neither of those things appeal to you, you obviously have the TFNL guides, which again, cheap workout programs with lots of information and bits and bobs to teach you how to train effectively, both within the gym and at home, both of which being the Home Workout Handbook and the TFNL Growth Guide have at least 30 weeks of programming within them for you to follow if you so wish. On top of that, something that is pending, I don't know when this video comes out, but July 3rd, Train Like Me, Train Heroic group program for group coaching releases. So you can just essentially follow the program that I am following, so we'll be following it together. And then on top of that, July 17th, I believe, two new TFNL guides are coming out, being upper body specific and glute specific. Stay tuned for that, because that's gonna be bloody spicy. I hear a lot of people are scared of getting into running because they don't want to lose muscle. Yeah, again, that's a really valid thing is that running and weight training can go hand in hand to an extent. Weight training and resistance training can definitely benefit your running. Because again, I mentioned this in the Natasha video, better power output, more efficient, better muscular endurance, things like that. Everyone used to say, if I do cardio, if I start running, I'm going to lose all my muscle mass. No, that, that's not necessarily the case. Ultimately, the thing is with the recovery, obviously being in mind as a, as a key variable there, you've got to ensure that you're still training with sufficient intensity, i.e. going to, if not close to failure in the gym. And then also keep in mind that because you are running more and potentially more active and moving more, you're going to burn more calories. Therefore, to maintain muscle mass to keep that same maintenance calories, you're going to have to consume more calories. So again, eat more because you're burning more. If you do that, there's no reason you should lose muscle mass, honestly. Find a running routine or app that doesn't seem to be the best, but seems doable. Again, yeah, I think that's really great. I think ultimately following a program can be really beneficial for not only accountability, but also a bit of direction and guidance too. Again, what is the best running program out there on the market? I'm unsure. I don't think there is such a thing as the best of anything. But again, going on from the video I did on Natasha, it might be worth considering looking at Natasha's hybrid program because again, from a basic overview perspective, it looks really good and it accommodates a lot of people. So you are a lot of options and you're not isolated to just following one program that this single app or program has set you. You have multiple programs to choose from depending on your goals and your ability levels. It's okay to stop and walk. Running became so much more enjoyable and accessible the day I realized I could stop and walk for a bit. I hear a lot of people actually say to me, oh, I don't stop running or I don't do X, Y, Z because I know I'll have to walk or I can't run the whole way. What's wrong with that? If you normally walk a kilometer every day, let's say, okay, why not run for a bit of that and walk the rest? And maybe next time run for a bit longer and walk the rest. And again, maybe next time run for even longer and walk the rest. Do that progressively over time. You're now progressively overloading in a sense but more so for running. Again, you can stop and walk. You can stop and rest if you need to. No one is going to tell you off for doing so. No one is going to suddenly take away all the progress you've made. And it's not going to mean you suddenly don't make any progress. Progress is not linear. You're going to have good days. You're going to have bad days. And sometimes you actually need to auto-regulate, which means you're going to have to change how you're working, how hard you're working, and how much you're doing, depending on how you feel on the day. Maybe you slept badly. Maybe you haven't eaten enough. Maybe you're just a bit stressed. Maybe life, family, home. It's all a bit much. And you just want to do something. Something is better than nothing but you cannot expect to set PBs or do amazing every time. We spoke about this in the video of Beth and Ryder, which I don't know is out yet, but hopefully it is. We spoke about 80-10-10. 80% of your sessions are probably going to be average. 10 are going to be bad, 10 might be good. Again, not saying that's necessarily the case, but something along those lines. You need rest days. Coming from a girl who did a run streak, that is not the most optimal way to get better at running. That's more of just like, if that's a challenge you want to go through, realize it could lead to burnout, it can lead to injuries. You kind of still have to have rest days. Yeah, I'm Honestly, rest is really important. For me personally, I like two rest days a week with whatever I'm doing. But again, you could do less than that. You could do more than that. It really does depend. You don't recover when you are training. You recover when you are resting. If I say, 
get your phone out and use your phone until it dies, 0% battery. How do you then start using your phone again? You have to recharge it. The body is the same. You use your you use your body, then you run out of battery. To use it again, you have to essentially recharge it. And if you never recharge it, your battery is gonna be flat for a long time. That could lead to burnout, which I spoke about in the Linda Sun video, is not a good time, not just for your physical health, but your mental health as well. That could lead to poor performance, regression even, so many things. Sometimes resting more could actually help accelerate your results. I used to do it myself. I used to train every day, think it was amazing. But when I started actually resting, more that I started doing less but achieving more. It really does depend on what you can recover from. Everyone is going to be different and it really depends on like external variables. Recovery is key and if you neglect recovery you're going to neglect progress too. But yeah honestly as a whole I think it's a pretty solid video. I think obviously like I mentioned with the Natasha video a lot of people are adopting summer runs and whatnot for whatever reason that is. Obviously the weather's nicer some people want to get outside more don't want to be stuck in a hot sweaty gym I understand that but ultimately things like this where Kelty's talking about how you can essentially mix and match your resistance training and running and how they can benefit one another it's definitely a good time same with Natasha you can do multiple things at once if you want to and you can be a bit flexible with your routine if you want to and sometimes changing things up is a bit nice and a bit spicy you know I think Kelty has actually come a long way obviously she shifted her emphasis a lot from when I first looked at her a while back and I've spoken to her a few times in that time and she's she's a bloody solid person and it's nice to see she seems to be finding herself a bit more in the whole training realm and she's always been open to trying new things she's very open to criticism which again I'm not really giving her much criticism here. I'm just kind of giving my opinion. But no, it's good to see that she is being very accommodating for quite a wide audience of people who might want things beyond just simply resistance training. So I respect it. Good stuff. No comment question of the week this week because I'm actually filming this video well in advance because I'm going to America in August, Louisiana, Texas, and LA at the beginning of August. So I'm trying to get ahead. But just know that there will be some more in the future. I'm just obviously, like I said, I'm kind of stockpiling videos and getting planned and prepped for my holiday. I say holiday, I'm kind of working. I'm coaching at the uh, powerlifting world championships and then holidaying afterwards. Thank you for tolerating me. Thank you for tolerating my, we'll say, air conned headpiece today because it's bloody warm. And thank you for tolerating the video.